How's it going guys? Caleb again, coming at you with another video. <clears throat> I haven't posted in a while. I only post kind of whenever I have a video or do something that I think maybe could help some people. Uh, today I'm doing a hitch on my mother-in-law's 2023 Honda HRV. Sorry. Uh, it's a sport. Um, I got the hitch from Napa.com uh, and I'm going to drop you or show you a picture of the hitch right quick. I haven't done one before, so we're kind of going to walk through this together and uh, see if we can get it knocked out pretty quick. So here we go. All right, let's see what we got. I wrapped it up in some good bubble wrap. Let me get this thing unwrapped and then we'll uh, show you what we're working with. All right, so we have the Kurt. Looks like it's a 11640. Right there, came with a hitch and some installation hardware. Uh, there is some instructions right there I'm gonna tear into, see if it has any guidance, but most likely it's not gonna be updated for this car. So uh, I'm gonna dig into this and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so I was wrong guys. The um, instructions that came with this hitch are for the 2023 uh, HRV, or 2022, 2023, the newest generation uh, HRV. Um, so looks like we do have to take off that little silver uh, piece right there and cut a hole in it for the receiver to, to fit through. Um, there are instructions in here. I'm gonna kind of walk through it um, and kind of follow everything step by step, just so you can kind of have uh, some visual preference or some visual aid, so to say. Um, I'm not an expert, but I mean, this stuff's not rocket science. So here we go. All right, so I'm under the vehicle. I'm gonna try to kind of show you this stuff, but it's really tight under here. But so this is the driver's side. Um, there's gonna be a Phillips head screw there. And there's gonna be a couple of these little plastic pop rivets there. There's gonna be one on each side. And then there's one right here. Um, so we're gonna pull out the screw. We're gonna pull out these little pop rivets, pull out that pop rivet, that little pop rivet. And how these come out, you just take a flathead screwdriver, yank that, and then it kind of comes out. Um, and then looks like there's another Phillips head screw on this side um, by the little muffler. So we're gonna take all those off and then see if we can get this little plastic piece off. All right, real quick guys, just wanna show you how you get these little deals out. Um, not everybody knows, I know it's simple, but not everybody knows. So I just want to try to make sure that everybody can, can do this if they want. So this is just a little flathead screwdriver that I bent a long time ago. It's kind of became really honestly one of my use, most used tools in the shop. So, um, I just use it to kind of get under there and then just kind of pry like that. Um, and then once you get it to a certain point, you can just pull it, comes out like that and that's loose. So. Uh, really, really easy to do on those. Just don't be too overzealous and break them or whatever. Just take your time and they'll come right out. All right, this one up here is a little different. I don't know if you can guys can see that one or not, but it's right there. This one I'm using a straight flathead with, just kind of pulling up like that and it popped right out. I know it's a little blurry, but that's uh, kind of the best thing I can do for that one. But it's right there, pops out really, really easy. Just, just be careful once again. All right, so here we go. Now we've got all of our little pop clips out. We got our Phillips head screw out right there. It's pretty easy. This is the driver's side again. So now if you come right here, there's a little tab. You can see that right there. Just separate that a little bit and then pull like that. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed filming it with an iPhone. So if it's a little shaky, I apologize. But so yeah, just do that. That pops out and then you just kind of work your way around. You'll see another one. Another one right here, uh, looks like one right here, kind of underneath that deal and under here and just kind of work your way around and eventually this little piece will come out. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna get out from underneath the car and show you what it looks like. All right guys, this is off of the car, kind of looking down on it, but just show you real quick. Here's your little screws that we had to take out. Uh, those are pretty easy. The little pop rivets, there's one, two and three. And then these little, just these little tabs, you have to kind of work out around it. You know, you can see there's quite a few of them that hold uh, it in there. So this is what we have to cut uh, for the hitch to go on, which I will um, go ahead and get the hitch on the vehicle and then cut this here in just a second. So, all right, so back under the vehicle, we're on the driver's side again. Um, there are gonna be two uh, 12 millimeter bolts here and then two on the other side, which this is where the hitch is gonna go. You can take these out um, and not worry about it falling because there's another one holding it up in there. So go ahead and just take these two out and that's where our new hitch is gonna mount. You guys, I've got kind of the hitch on here with 
one bolt on each side hanging it in place. Got some help that showed up to the shop. But, so basically, just put this new one in here. That's a 13 millimeter, sorry, instead of a 12. Uh, make sure the washers are curved uh, the right way. Make sure the little, the little uh, nipples are facing towards the hitch. But we'll put one more on this side and one more on this side right there. And what I use is just a 13 millimeter with a little medium size extension. Works perfectly, but we're gonna get the other ones on there, get them torqued into to spot, uh, to place, and uh, you know, go from there. All right, so we got two there. We got two there. We got them kind of loosely on there. And then, so now we have to run our um, little, uh, what do they call that? They call it a recovery hook. Um, we, there's a bolt they provide with us to run through this. Um, pretty easy. You can see the square flange there. There's a square on that. So we're gonna run this into there like that. Then on this side, we're gonna run this plate. One-handed, here we go. Yeah, run the plate there and then run the nut there. So I'm gonna get that loosely done up and then we're gonna torque everything to spec. Uh, the instructions say to, uh, oh, where is it? All right, so the M8 hardware, which is gonna be your screws right there, go to 23 foot-pounds, and then your half-inch hardware, which is gonna be your plate right there, goes to uh, 90 foot-pounds. All right, so we got, can I please shoot a video, please? Thank you. All right, so we got, uh, two that are torqued to 23 foot pounds there. We got our plate in place and torqued to 90 foot pounds there. And then we got our two over here. So this is what we're dealing with as of right now. Now we're to the part that everybody loves, which is actually cutting the bumper. So we're gonna get into that and I'll show you exactly how I do that. Okay, so if you're wondering, do I have to cut the bumper? Yes, you do, because uh, it hits right there. If you can kind of see when you push it into place, it hits right there. So you do have to cut a little notch out of this thing um, so it'll slide all the way back into place. So it won't be that bad, so don't be intimidated. Uh, it should be pretty stinking easy. So here we go. All right, guys, so I have my cut marked. Very, very important for the love of all things that matter. This hole is not centered with the bumper, so do not use that as a guide to measure. Uh, what I did is I measured from this point to this point, got my center point here, and then measured off of that uh, so I make sure that it's right. It says that it should be two and a quarter inches wide and by two inches deep into the bumper. So two and a quarter this way, two inches into the bumper. So we're gonna cut that out. I'm gonna use uh, just some tin snips that I have. I'm gonna drill the corners out uh, and then uh, I'll show you how that works. All right, so I just took a drill bit and I drilled the corners. Get that shadow off there. Uh, drill the corners of my little diagram out. And then I'm gonna take these 10 snips and kind of go up that way and then across and back down. Should get a pretty clean little cut. Once again, it's gonna be under the vehicle. Nobody's gonna see it. So, you know, don't be too self-conscious. So there's our cut, nothing crazy, nothing difficult. Now it's time to put it on the car, redo all of our clips and stuff like that. All installed, fit and finish. Our cut turned out really, really good. Let me get to the other side so you can see. Yeah, our cut turned out really, really good, really, really tight. Um, but that was it, man. That was actually a really, really simple install. All right, ladies and gents, there she is. She's all done. Uh, pretty, pretty easy install. I would encourage anybody uh, that wants to do this to do it. I would dare to say if you can install a light bulb, um, you could do this, but somebody would prove me wrong because I'm not gonna make that statement. Just a very, very easy install. The worst part was the cut. Uh, as you can tell by the way I did it, it's not really that bad and it's up underneath the car so nobody's really gonna see it. But just make sure that you're dead center because um, you don't wanna cut to the left or to the right, then you have a big mess. But even if that, even if you do that, um, you know, you can still fix that. So uh, I would say that the um, not going too far into the bumper is probably more important. But um, anyways, if you have any questions, you know, drop me some comments on here. You can message me on Instagram, Caleb Jones 032 um, Pretty easy, uh, pretty responsive for the most part. And once again, 
um, don't uh, let this thing scare you. It's super easy to do. So hope everybody's staying healthy and uh, have a great day.